Welcome revolutionaries. Today, we'll be taking a look at Frederick Douglass, one of the most influential African American revolutionaries in American history. Um, a fun fact, before we really get started, Douglas was an inspiration for the selection of February as Black History Month. Though his actual birth date is unknown, he chose to celebrate his birthday on February 14th. The caveat today is every time that I say slave or slavery, the game in the background will change for you. So let's get right into it. Frederick Douglass, original name, Frederick Augustus Washington Bailey, born presumably in February of 1818, Tuckahoe, Maryland, United States, died February 20th, 19, 1895, Washington, D.C., African American who was one of the most eminent human rights leaders in the 19th century. His oratorical and literary brilliance thrust him into the forefront of the United States abolition movement, and he became the first black citizen to hold high rank in the United States government. Douglas was born in 1818. Though the month and date are uncertain, he later opted to celebrate his birthday on February 14th. Separated as an infant from his slave mother, he never knew his white father. Frederick lived with his grandmother on a Maryland plantation until he was eight years old, when his owner sent him to Baltimore to live as a house servant with the family of Hugh Auld, whose wife defied state law by teaching the boy to read. Auld, however, declared that learning would make him unfit for slavery and Frederick was forced to continue his education surreptitiously with the aid of schoolboys in the street. Upon the death of his master, he was returned to the plantation as a field hand at 16. Later, he was hired out in Baltimore as a ship caulker. Frederick tried to escape with three others in 1833, but the plot was discovered before they could get away. Five years later, however, he fled to New York City and then to New Bedford, Massachusetts. We worked as a laborer for three years, eluding slave hunters by changing his surname to Douglas. At a Nantucket, Massachusetts anti-slavery convention in 1841, Douglas was invented, was invited to describe his feelings and experiences under slavery. These extemporaneous remarks were so poignant and elo eloquent that he unexpectedly was catapulted into a new career as agent for the Massachusetts Anti-Slavery Society. From then on, despite heckling and mockery, insult, and violent personal attack, Douglas never flagged in his devotion to the abolitionist cause. To counter skeptics who doubted that such an articulate spokesman could have ever been a slave, Douglas felt impelled to write his autobiography in 1845, revised and completed in 1882 as Life and Times of Frederick Douglass. Douglass's account became a classic in American literature, as well as a primary source about slavery from the bondman's viewpoint. To avoid recapture by his owner, by his former owner, whose name and location he had given in the narrative, Douglas left on a two-year speaking tour of Great Britain and Ireland. Abroad, Douglas helped to win many new friends for the abolition movement and to cement the bonds of humanitarian reform between the continents. Douglas returned with funds to purchase his freedom and also to start his own anti-slavery newspaper, The North Star, later Frederick Douglass's paper, which he published from 1847 to 1860 in Rochester, New York. The abolition leader, William Lloyd Garrison, disagreed with the need for separate, black-orientated press, and the two men broke over this issue as well as over Douglas's support of political action to supplement moral suasion. Thus, after 1851, Douglas allied himself with the faction of the movement led by James G. Burney. He did not countenance violence, however, and specifically counseled against the raid on Harper's Ferry, Virginia, on October 1859. During the Civil War, from 1861 to 65, Douglas became a consultant to President Abraham Lincoln, advocating that former slaves be armed from, for the North and that the war be made a direct confrontation against slavery. Throughout Reconstruction, he fought for full civil rights for freedom and vigorously supported the women's rights movement. After Reconstruction, Douglas served as an assistant secretary of the Santo Domingo Commission in 1871, and in the District of Columbia he was marshal from 1877 to 1881, and recorder of deeds from 1881 to 1886. Finally, he was appointed U.S. Minister and Council General to Haiti from 1889 to 91. This is quite a short video, but 
Frederick Douglass is a very, very influential man, and there is far more to his story than I have merely covered here. If you'd like to read more, I highly recommend looking him up. Thank you for watching.